All right, what are the differences between the 82, 83, and 84 Trans Ams? Uh, this really does, this is gonna be a long-winded video. It's not gonna be a short video, but people, I mean, I, these cars have always been grouped into three, three categories, basically, as far as third-gen Trans Ams. The first are the 82 to 84s. Um, the second is the 85 to 90, and then finally the 91 to 92. Um, they're, they're grouped into these separate kind of categories based on um, just, the, just the exterior and interior appearance of the car. I mean, you know, everything is um, like year specific almost. And you wouldn't think like in the 80s, of all of all eras there was like year to year differences like there were you know in the <clears throat> in the 60s like you know on my chevelle or something like that um but there are and it really bugs me when um <clears throat> you see like online or you know in classified ads and stuff like that uh 80 82 to 92 parts you know and Granted that, you know, there is a lot of interchangeability. 99% of the stuff on these cars is interchangeable from year to year. But I just wanted to break down, you know, kind of a front to rear, bumper to bumper type, you know, um, <clears throat> kind of a breakdown of, of, you know, what was what from year to year. You know, uh, so like I said, 82 to 84 Trans Am is the same, same exterior wise, regardless. Um, you know, same fenders, same air extractors. Uh, same hood with the exception of the 82 Trans Ams um, having the, um, you know, the T46 bulge hood was an option on 82 cars. Um, so we'll start with 82. Um, in 1982, um, the standard hood for a non-crossfire, meaning carbureted Trans Am, was a flat hood. Um, the T46 hood was an option on carbureted Trans Ams in 82. It was standard on Crossfire cars in 82. The 82 carbureted cars, the hood was not functional, and that screen you see in the back there was basically just covered off with a plate with a non-functional single snorkel air cleaner. Um, 1982, 83, and 84 all used the same um, front, front bumper cover with the same kind of slotted grills. Um, 83, um, uh, was also, you know, the only, uh, how do I put this? 83 did receive on the Daytona 500 pace cars, um, of which there was 2,500 made. They received the, um, solid, uh, solid grill panels, which also became, um, on the 84 W62, which was the aero package with the ground effects and everything also received those solid panels. Um, you know, like I said, same fenders, same hood, everything, you know, all the body panels are the same. Engine compartment wise, um, it's pretty much all identical. The, um, you know, the, there are some differences as far as like AC lines. The AC lines on the 82s routed back and across the front of the air cleaner into your dryer and your, and your lines. Um, most 82s did, did have a spine, kind of a support spine right here on your fan shroud. So, you know, the, those are like the little subtle differences that, you know, that people aren't aware of. Um, you know, everything else is pretty much the same. The location of all your stuff, you know, your map sensor, your, you know, your vacuum chamber for your, for your AC and all your mode doors and everything, all that stuff is the same. So engine compartment wise, they really didn't change much other than those, those specific 82 pieces. They all received, you know, on the non-ground effects cars, 84 included. Um, because like I said, the ground effects, the aero package W62 was an option in 1984. So getting to the wheels now, the N89, they're called turbo wheels. Um, I'm not sure where the turbo cast term came from. I mean, I think that was one of the little, you know, uh, Knight Rider community phrases that was coined way, way back in the day. Um, as far as the availability of these wheels, they were available from 82 to 84. Um, 82 to 84, they were available in a 14 by 7. 82 and 83, they were available in a 15 by 7. 
um, on the Firebird SEs, they were available uh, with color keyed caps, um, depending on the color of the car. If you had a gold car, you got gold caps. If you got a, you know, a, uh, a maroon car, you got maroon caps. Um, they also had a brushed finish with that were not painted um, on some of the uh, on some of the Firebird SEs as well. Um, all cars from 82 to 84 were available with the uh, the B84 um, side side door strips or, or body strips. Um, the way to tell if they're original or not is on the on the factory equipped um, B84 cars with this molding. Um, they were they were applied with two sided tape. Um, the only the and how to tell they're aftermarket or not is the um the aftermarket companies that did these had aluminum strips and they were riveted to the body and then they had a rubber strip that went in you know it's kind of like a filler piece so i i see a lot of people you know online saying that you know their riveted strips you know their riveted side strips were, were factory factory applied that is 100 percent false um again the only strips were you know, apply it from the factory with two-sided tape. Um, you know, like I said, everything, you know, everything's the same moving back. Um, the interior is where you really get into your differences. Um, so going into the car, let me shut this off. Um, starting with your door panels, your 82 to 84 door panels are nearly identical in appearance. Um, the difference again being 1982, was kind of a one year only type thing. Um, this material here, granted I put suede in here um, because the original material was, was junk when I got the car. So on the 82 cars, this strip right here, this was 82 was the only year that this strip was chrome. Um, some 82 cars, mainly the earlier builds, also had a round little Firebird emblem right here, which was actually a blank for um, power window cars. This right here, this is where your window crank would be on a non-power window car. Armrests are the same, all your door trims the same, upper door trim is the same from 82 to 84. Um, so like I said, if you ever come across a set of door panels and this is chrome, they're 82 door panels. Uh, another one that really gets me is the dash pad. Um, 82 through 84, use the dash and 82 to 84 only, used a dash that had these two simulated kind of stitching like style lines in the front of it. Um, 85 to 92, this went away and this was more of a rounded, you know, rounded face on the dash pad. Um, 82 uh, speaker cover grills. Um, if you know, if you've, you know, the majority of third gens, they have, you know, the, the kind of like the slat speaker grills and they have the, um, it's kind of a border, kind of like a raised border going around the, the um, you know, the perimeter of the speaker grill. 99.99% of 82s did not have that. They were, they were grilled all the way across without that border on there. Um, as far as gauge clusters, this is another one that bugs me. This is an 84 L69 gauge cluster that I put in here. So the car is not original. I'm not portraying it to be original. So don't comment on that, that part of it. But as far as the gauge clusters go, every single year from 82 to 84 was different. 82, uh, I'm not sure if people know, but had white needles and a seven digit odometer. So you had your mileage on an 82, which was six digits plus your tenths digit, and they had white backlighting. They were all equipped with a 6,000 RPM tack and a 60, 60 pound oil pressure gauge. In 83, you, they retained the white backlighting with the exception of the Daytona 500 pace cars, of which there were 2,500 made. And they, like I said, they had white backlighting. They went to orange needles like this and this six digit odometer, tenths included. Um, the 84 cars um, could, or actually they were available with, a, with this basic cluster um, obviously because this is an 84 cluster, uh, again, six digit odometer, orange needles, and they all had orange backlighting across the board. It wasn't, you know, um, Recaro specific or, or anything like that. It was all orange from, you know, orange backlighting. The 83 and 84 L69 cars, the HO carbureted cars, <clears throat> 
um, had an 8,000 RPM tack and an 80 pound oil pressure gauge. So, you know, there, there are differences that you don't even realize once you start getting into these cars, why they changed it year to year. I'm not really sure. Um, I do like the, um, you know, the orange backlighting and I like the L69 cluster, which is why I put it in here. Um, I don't like the white backlighting and I don't like the 6,000 RPM tack. Um, <clears throat> 82s and 83s had a plain black map pouch on the dash, regardless. 84 was the same black pouch, but had um, gold lettering, um, not really gold, it was kind of yellow, um, had the word Trans Am with the bird, you know, in the lower right corner. Um, 82 obviously had the round, you know, the round ball shifter, kind of reminiscent of the, the, you know, the second generation F bodies. Um, all the same basic console, upper and lower console, everything, you know, all identical. Uh, the 82 cars did have a gray console regardless of interior color. Um, when I had this one out, I went ahead and um, I was touching up some interior pieces and um, I decided to do the lower console gray, you know, like an 82 since this car is factory equipped with a charcoal interior. So, you know, I went ahead and did the gray lower console um, you know, to kind of give that look of an 82 and, you know, I like it. So 83 had the small T handle that you see here. 84 had, you know, uh, the same, it was a T handle, but it was kind of the big, um, you know, you're, you're, I don't even know how to say it, but it was, you know, it was just kind of the big standard shifter handle that they used from 84 all the way up through the nineties, even on, you know, Grand Ams and Sunbirds and, and you name it. Um, console lid is the same. Um, as far as the seats, um, this is another one that gets me. A lot of people say that the, you know, as far as the 82s, the AR9 Viscount seats with the open headrest that all the, you know, Knight Rider, uh, we'll, we'll just call them Knight Rider people, um, call PMD seats. Those were available in 1982 only um, in the... Uh, in the Firebird SEs and Trans Ams with the B20 uh, luxury interior package, which meant the carpeted rear panels. The standard AS9 seats, um, in the, which were also available in Trans Ams, just because it's an 82 Trans Am doesn't mean that it gets the AR9 Viscount seats. Um, the, um, the standard AS9 seats from 82 to 84 had a basically an integrated headrest without the pull-up headrest. It was just a solid you know, kind of crap looking seat. And the AS9 cars as well did not have this cloth insert in here. They kind of had these styled in ribs, you know, uh, they were used a lot on Camaros as well in this, in this time period. Um, 83 and 84, these are fourth gen seats. I put them in there because they're, you know, the driver's side's power and they're a lot more comfortable than what was in it in 83. But the 83 and 84 um, seats, were basically the same seats, you know, with the exception of some different color options and stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously your, your 82 to 84 Recaro cars would, you know, have come with Recaro seats. 82 was the only year you could get a Recaro with charcoal 17 C interior. Um, the 83 and 84 Recaros would have had tan interior 64. Um, so, you know, as far as the seats, that's all that goes with that. Um, 82 also had its own specific sill plate and seat belt assembly. Um, the 82 did not have a retractor right here. The bottom of this belt was mounted solid. It had the retractor up in the headliner and um, your basically your buckle was kind of on a slide. It would adjust, you know, as you pulled the seat belt out. 83 and 84, they went to this. Um, 82 and 83 used this style of seat belt receptacle with the button on the side, the little blue GM button. 84, they went to the, the, um, the release mechanism was on top. It was an orange button that you push down from the top to release the seat belt. Um, back seats, 82 used a solid rear seat. 83 and 84 used a split seat back. All of the rear interior panels are the same. Um, you know, the, um, 80, uh, 82 to 84, all the rear interior panels are the same. The headliner is the same. Dome light is the same. 
Um, you could get this dome light with optional map lights that in, in the front here, that was not year specific. That was an option across all three years. Um, T-tops are all identical with the exception of 1984. They went to a pin style latch as opposed to the hooks. Um, I prefer the hooks over the pins. Um, they're easier to adjust and keep tight. So, you know, that's the difference. 82 to 83 had um, the hook latch mechanism, 84 and up had the pin style. Um, what else? Moving along to the, you know, the rest of the car. Um, another 82, 83 specific detail were the mirrors and the spoiler. Um, most people don't know this, but the, um, the mirrors on an 82 and 83 Trans Am, as well as the spoiler, were painted um, kind of a low gloss black. It was actually applied with DuPont DX8 lacquer paint, regardless of body color. That means white, red, blue, black, it does not matter. If you got a black Trans Am in 82 and 83, you got um, satin, I'll call them satin, um, because they're not gloss with the rest of the car, mirrors and spoiler. Um, as far as the rest of the car goes, everything is pretty much, you know, identical, 82 to 84. Um, your tail lights are all the same. Um, all 82 to 84 Trans Ams did receive a, um, a smoked rear tail lens assembly. Um, The gold lettering and the gold, or the, yeah, the gold lettering and the gold bird on the tail light center was only available on black, black and gold 82 trans or 82 to 84 Trans Ams. If you got any other color of Trans Am, here, let me show you again. <clears throat> any other color, this bird would be silver. These letters would be silver. So all that stuff is correct for, you know, for a black, <clears throat> technically it's correct for a black only car. Um, one more thing as I was passing by is the steering wheel. Um, this is the standard Trans Am steering wheel for 82 and 83. Um, in 83, you got an optional leather wrapped wheel. And I don't think it was leather. I don't know what it was. Um, and it also had a different horn button. It didn't have this little emblem in the middle of it. It, um, this whole area was pretty much flat and it had kind of a, a Firebird, I don't want to say embossed, but I, I will, embossed in the horn button. Um, one more thing, I keep finding stuff as I'm going around here. These are correct 82 or 83 to 84 seatbelt retainer, seatbelt loops for the headrest. 82 also had a one year only, its own year, um, seatbelt retainer <clears throat> that was kind of a, a thin flimsy plastic that mounted along the headrest and kind of came out and was L-shaped and that's where your seatbelt guide was. That's also 82 only. Um, another 82 specific feature were these, it's hard to see, um, these, <clears throat> these little trim pieces around the seatbelt right here. 82, um, they were just a square. They didn't cover this little slit where the headliner meets the speaker cover on the side. Um, 83 and 84 had that same same clip-in piece, but it also had a small strip that covered that seam in the headliner down to the speaker cover. 82 also had chrome uh, coat hooks. So I just wanted to give like a, you know, a bumper to bumper type thing um, in, in regards to a lot of this stuff because there's so much misinformation out there and I, I just love how people will sit there and be so adamant on what year, what year came with what. And, you know, it really, really bugs me because I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I love learning about production numbers, options, available colors, combinations, stuff like that. And, you know, it really, really drives me up a wall when I hear people uh, I mean, I had a, I had a guy, um, <clears throat> it was probably about a month ago now, 
but he had an 85 Trans Am and was insisting that it was an 84. And it's just like you're going back and forth and you're trying to, you know, educate this guy. You know, first of all, it's like, look at your title, look at your VIN number. And, you know, I mean, the thing was a, an 84 Trans Am um, L69 car with ground effects and N78 wheels. And, um, you know, the guy was just adamant about it. And it's like, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with not knowing. But, I mean, if you own the car, you should know what you own. You know, so I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to touch on some of this stuff. I mean, I can go even deeper into production numbers, how many cars were were, you know, a certain color in a certain year, um, how many cars came with a specific interior color, um, how many cars, you know, I mean, I could break it down as far as radio options and production numbers and this, this and that. So it's all, you know, it's all a matter of who wants to hear what and how much detail. But, you know, those are just the big ones where, you know, I'll see a restored, in quotes, restored, you know, 82 or 83 Trans Am and the mirrors and, and spoiler are painted body color. And in my mind, that's not restored. It's, it's, you know, it's not restored properly. Um, <clears throat> you know, people, <clears throat> people insist that the, you know, the, um, the open headrest, um, AR9 Viscount seats, which were 82 only, people insist those were available in 83. There's never been a shred of proof to ever come to light that those seats were available in any other year than 1982. Um, the N89 wheels, um, you know, there's a lot of people say those are 82 only. They're not. Again, they were made for three years and, you know, they're, they're still, they're not hard to find, but, you know, it's just like everything, you know, the unfortunate thing with these early third gen Trans Ams is the, you know, they all carry now this, this Knight Rider price tag where, um, you know, everything is associated with the show and, you know, it's just ridiculous. You know, I mean, I get it, you know, but at, at the same time, I had a 69 Charger. I've had a 68 Charger. And I mean, my 69 Charger was blue with a black vinyl top and black interior. And, you know, everywhere I went, <clears throat> anybody that's under the age of 50 or 60, you know, all you hear is General Lee comments. And it's like, you know, grow up. There's more of these cars than, you know, than a TV show. Um, so, you know, like I said, those are the big ones. Um, that I wanted to touch on and um, you know it's uh, it's just just walking around the car it's just what jumps out at me right off the bat um, you know like I said if anybody's interested I can go into more detail as far as how many cars were built you know in red how many how many 82s were built and you know were blue how many 84s had the um, you know the factory cassette deck with the five band equalizer I mean I have production numbers on all that stuff you know, so this, I just kind of want to branch out from the crossfire injection stuff a little bit and, um, you know, go into something a little bit more just general, generic, third gen related. So, you know, if you guys have any other questions or, you know, have any, want me to clarify anything or make more videos about this kind of stuff, definitely let me know because this is the kind of stuff that I enjoy is the, you know, the research, the nitpicking, the, you know, the, the options, all the, all the little detail stuff is, is what I enjoy about these cars. Um, you know, so yeah, leave a comment, let me know what you guys want to see next and uh, I'll be happy to make another video about it.